What happens when you get lost? Out in the mountains, nobody gives you anything. And you learn what the rules were after the game is over. By then, it's already night. And it doesn't make any difference what anyone else is thinking or doing, for you have to turn into an Indian. He was about 30% um, Lakota, William Stafford. Then you remember stories. And you know that the tellers were part of all they said, and everyone is part of it, even you. And they are all around you. But if you're too afraid, you will never find them. That's a reference to the idea that you're never really alone if you understand the ancestors, the idea of the ancestors or even the animals, that we're never really alone. They are all around us, but if we're too afraid, we'll never find them. Those questions people used to ask, what would you do if? They have their own answer now. Nothing. Listen, some things cannot be redeemed in a hurry. This is the place we're in. It's in Venezuela. It's all over this country. It's in the European Union. It's in the Philippines. Some things cannot be redeemed in a hurry, no matter about the intentions. What could be done had to have happened a long time ago. For mistakes have consequences that do not simply disappear. Listen, if evil could be canceled, it would not be very evil. Things happen in the world that cannot simply be canceled. By the way, the oldest meaning of evil, I can hear that kid from Chicago saying that I'm not about to tell the truth, but the oldest meaning of evil is unripe. The really interesting idea that evil is something that's unripe, that it, were it to ripen, it would be a good fruit. It's unripe fruit. If evil could simply be canceled, it would not be very evil. Meanwhile, the stars you see while you drift away have their own courses. They watch you and they already know your name. And that's a wild thing for an American poet to do, to suddenly jump to the stars and say, while we feel lost, the stars are watching us and they know our name. And that goes back to an old thing you find with the Mayans, for instance, where everybody has a star name. We're connected to the stars. In, in the Genius Myth, I have a chapter on, uh, on the stars and humans. That uh, there's a strange thing that has happened where uh, the old idea is that we're all connected to the stars, we're born of the stars. And that uh, we all have a destiny. And the word destiny from the Latin, destinare, it means of the stars. And we're of the stars and we're aimed at stars. We're all star born. And then um, the scientists working on their understanding of the cosmos from a kind of a literal positivistic science point of view have concluded that the stars are pouring down something like, I never get figures right, I think it's 4,000 tons of stardust hits the earth every year. And then it doesn't lay around like on top of cars. It goes into the earth and, it, and, the, and the star gets, it gets absorbed by the plants. And when we eat the plants, we're eating the dust of stars. And, they, and the stardust is inside our bodies and our bodies replace the cells every seven years. And they're partly replaced with stardust. We are of the stars. We are made of the stars. We are uh, digesting stars. And we ourselves have a bit of a star in us. And I'm calling that bit of star the genius. And I'm saying these things partly because as we go through these very difficult, this difficult period we're in, it's really easy to feel small and defeated, helpless and hopeless. And I thought it might be helpful to have some of the bigger metaphors that used to be part of the vertical imagination of being human. And one of them is that we're all of the stars.